Now, you may remember uh, just over a month or so ago, um, me sharing with you the story of Naomi, Naomi from Hannam, who's lived with Emmy for 25 years. I went to go and see Naomi at her home. And we had from her Tom, uh, from her brother Tom, a video which I popped on Facebook. We were overwhelmed with the response to Naomi's story and to the numbers of people who watched the video. Over 15,000 people watched Naomi's video. We then did a phone in uh, on ME and CFS, ME and CFS chronic fatigue syndrome. Again, we were overwhelmed by the response to that as well. And today I'm joined by Mike, Mike from Bristol, Bedminster in Bristol. He's doing something about raising the profile of ME and uh, CFS. He's also uh, doing it uh, in style in 28 European countries because he's running 28 marathons. Mike, good morning. Good morning, John. Are you nuts? Uh, yeah, I am a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's start with your connection to ME. How, how did you get involved with, with ME? Because we have been overwhelmed by the response to Naomi's story. There are those who still think of it as yuppie flu. Mm -hmm. um, there is a debate as to whether it is actually an illness or it's something of the mind, and the World Health Organization are debating that one at the moment. How did you get involved with it? Um, well, one of my friends, uh, Ian, who I grew up with back in Cornwall, um, has had ME for about eight or nine years, and he's just not been able to work or mm. lead a normal life. Um, and I've obviously been talking to him throughout that time, um, wanted to do something to help. Um, you know, you, there's very little you can do as a friend, really. Um, but the one thing which sort of came up in conversation was how much um, sort of research and work was happening mm. uh, through charities like Invest in ME. Um, and he mentioned a trial which was going really well in Norway and they wanted to bring it to the UK um, and all they needed was money. So it felt, you know, like a really good idea to try and raise the profile and do something for charity to and, try and bring it in. And this is about, obviously, research funding. This is about raising profile. And this is, you know, 250,000 people live with ME in the UK. I That's from ME charities and support groups. I, I have to say, bearing in mind what I have been through... Uh, listening to people talking about Emmy off air and Naomi's story, I think that's a soft number. I, I wonder if there are more people out there who are living with Emmy and don't even know they've got it. They just yeah. think it absolutely shattered. I'm quite sure. And yeah. that, you know, this is a, an, an undiagnosed illness. Tell me about your friend Paul because he's he's had it for nine years. Is he the sort of person who before this was? Like you, running marathons and... Um, yeah, maybe not so much running marathons, but, yeah, yeah just really active, really popular. Um, you know, he'd often come and see me in Bristol. Mm. Um, you know, just, yeah, when we graduated at the same time, I stayed in Bristol. Um, he went to uni in Nottingham, and, you know, he was... Um, you know, he did, it, did really well at university, had his whole career in front of him, mm. uh, went back for the summer and uh, just contracted it, and, you know, he's not really been able to sort of get himself healthy for work again um, since then. So, so he's been off work for nine years? Yeah, yeah. And um, what from his life, because it's predominant illness that seems to affect women, although men do get yeah. it, clearly your friend Paul gets it. What's his life like? What is this this friend of yours, Paul, like, like Ian, now? Yeah. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Ian, sorry. Yeah. What's his life like? What's Ian's life like on a, on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, when I talk to him, it is sort of very much, you know, good spells where you feel more positive and then, you know, just around the corner... You know, it can be several weeks or months of, you know, really struggling. Um, so I think, you know, sort of lack of energy, you know, getting tired easily. Um, you know, it's it's just affected, you know, every aspect of his life, really. Um, and it is, you know, obviously you feel pretty health, um, helpless, you know, if you are a friend or part of the family. And, um, it must be tough for you to see a good friend like this. And, and I, I remember from Naomi's story, there is that, feeling that you read about it and you want to say to your friend or your daughter or your son come on get going put yourself together yeah come yep. on come on you know how hard can it be yeah have I you do... been through that with, with um ian? no because i mean ian is one of the most positive people i've ever met mm. in my life and every time i speak to him he's full of you know enthusiasm yeah. about what we're talking about um he's a really active guy i've never seen him depressed or negative you know about the situation he's really hopeful and positive um and i mean you know we did a challenge last year where we went around the whole of the uk visiting football grounds 
we did 92 football grounds in 92 hours for, wow. for the same charity. Yeah, right. And we met loads of people with Emmy who turned up at the grounds, including children. Mm. And you, you just can't tell me that a four or five year old child in a wheelchair is, you know, making it up or depressed or it's not a mental. So, so why is it? You, you're, you, you're raising money. I said you've done this a couple of times now. Ian is a good friend of yours. Um, I know that you're getting support from other uh, people who are living with Emmy. Yep. Why is it, do you think? that it's not taken as seriously as those who are living with it feel that it should be? I think it's just a, a real sort of neglect from the government and, you know, people who should be funding research projects. Um, but why? Why do you think that is? I have no idea. It's really baffling to me. I think it's just got really bad stereotypes uh, around the it. The yuppie flu thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Know, malingerers and, and all that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, I mean, what I find crazy is, you know, out of the 250,000 people you mentioned, I mean, a lot of these people want to work and want to contribute. You know, they don't want to be off work for prolonged periods. The government really should identify that and put money behind helping them get better and put research into it. Um, but for whatever reason, the charities just aren't receiving any kind of funding for research. Um, and it's, you know, it's not getting any better, so we've got to do it ourselves. Well, 28 marathons in 28 European countries, although we've identified that, in fact, there will probably be 29 marathons, uh, <laughs> and you've done two already. Let's take a pause for a piece of music, then we'll talk about these marathons, a bit more about your friend as well, and about why you are doing this, and how hard is it to run 28 marathons <laughs> in 28? I have a feeling that it's very hard. Uh, Mike, more from Mike from Bedminster and Bristol. After the Supremes on BBC Radio Bristol. The Supremes and Baby Love on BBC Radio Bristol. Uh, we'll catch up with Steve Yabsley, uh, who's on your radio after the news at midday. And Claire Cavanagh this afternoon, joined by the actress Stephanie Cole, uh, who's been in everything, including Tenko. I'd miss Tenko. I liked Tenko. It wasn't the best drama, but there was something about Tenko. You're nodding. You, are you a fan of Tenko, <laughs> Mike Harley? I was shaking my head, actually. You say have no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about, don't you? Nope. Um, it, was a, it was a prisoner of war drama. Uh, and I think it was shot somewhere on the south coast, but it was supposed to be Singapore. So it's one of those sort right. of things, like, you know, like, like they used Wookiee Hole for Doctor Who. Uh, they used sort of, you know, jungle. It sounds vibes. great. I'll go and find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'll be able to spend hours <laughs> watching it on YouTube. Anyway, Mike, <laughs> Mike Harley here from Bedminster uh, in Bristol, running 28 marathons in 28 countries uh, for Emmy. And, and it's for a specific charity within the whole Emmy um support network that's yep. out there for people living with this with, with the with the condition that's who right. are you doing it for uh, it's it's for a charity called invest in emmy um who are entirely voluntary run um any donation sponsors aren't you know don't go towards mm. salaries it's purely to fund research projects to try and get cures and treatments for emmy um and in particular this one trial which is going really well uh, in norway which has produced some amazing results mm. um which they're trying to replicate they're working with them in the UK um, to get it set up and produce some results which they can, you know, really show that research projects are the so way to go. So this is a treatment that they're doing in Norway, uh, which is a trial treatment that yep. Invest in ME are trying to replicate here in the United yep. Kingdom. Yeah, so they're, they're researchers and consultants are working with the guys in Norway. Um, they're joining up slowly the whole of Europe mm. into the European ME Alliance, which, you know, will collectively, there'll be research mm. projects which... You know, if they're as successful as this one in Norway's looking, and it's, you know, it's um, it's just had its second wave of positive mm -hmm. results. Um, you know, and they're good, they're going to build a centre of excellence as well in the UK, where people can go and get proper di diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, actual research projects can take place on site. Mm -hmm. You know, can just re really raise the profile of the illness. So. <laughs> I know from, from Naomi's story, the reaction we had here at BBC Radio Bristol and the reaction I had to a blog that I wrote on it myself and what people are going through living with this condition. And then there is that debate between ME and CFS and, and there is a, a community surrounding both. What would the, the, the treatment mean for your friend Ian? Oh, it would be massive, yeah. I mean, What would it do for him? Well, I mean, hopefully it, it could mean that he could you know, almost catch up on the years that he's lost. Mm. And, you know, I know that he wants to obviously get back into work. He wants to feel healthier. Um, 
Because it's know. not going to cure him, but this is going to make it's going to treat it. It's going to make it better for him. Yeah, you. yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, any improvement would would be amazing for him um, and for loads of other people that we've met and mm. support us. You know, all the way through both the challenges we, you know, we've done and the one that I'm doing. So, so you, how many marathons have you run so far? Um, so I've run two. I've got my third um, a week Saturday. Which country is that? Uh, I'm off to Finland to okay. run Helsinki. Um, wow. Which looks like a really interesting one. Um, Isn't that going to be a bit hilly? Um, I have been told that, yeah, but they, they've changed the route slightly to, to benefit Try and make it a bit me. more flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I don't think Helsinki was a particularly flat city, but nevertheless, so you've, where have you run so far then? So I've, I've done the UK, so I did London when I was a lot younger yeah. and fitter. Yeah. Um, and I did Prague um, about two months ago, right? which went really well. Okay. Um, and I got lots of support out there from... You know, the, the Czech Amy Association had yeah. people cheering me on the way round. Wow. Um, you know, and it's it's been great. All the countries that, you know, we've kind of said, I'm, I'm coming to run. Mm. You know, they've they've shown real interest and want, want local papers and TV and stuff there. So this, as you say, could knit together all these various groups um, yeah. to hopefully support investment in research and treatment. Uh, yeah, definitely. For, for the condition. So Hel Helsinki's next. Um, and then that's that uh, maths here now, 25. 25 left to go. Yep. Are you going to do the Bristol to Bath inaugural marathon? Um, it, it may well be my last one. Um, when I get to the end of it, it'll be a really right. nice home, homecoming. Right. Um, you know, I did UK a long time ago, mm -hmm. so I kind of feel like maybe... You know, I I would really like to finish the whole thing in Bristol. So these so. 25 marathons, then, you're doing them over the next few months? Uh, no, no, this is going to take me a little while longer because, yeah. right. I mean, it's just logistical sort of yes. costs and flights. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll be trying to do, you know, hopefully five or six a year right. um, and get them done, you know, as soon as I can. Well, good luck with the Helsinki Marathon. Thank you. If you want to find out more, put Invest in ME um, into a search engine of your choice and you'll find out more about who Mike is running for supporting ME. Um, what, final question, what do you think the answer is to help your friend Ian and all those who must have contacted you and are supporting you um, for ME? Is it, is it as simple as money? Um, I think it's raising awareness as well. So, you know, there's the social media side of things. I mean, I'd, I'd really like to reach, you know, people who would consider running or doing some sort of sponsored mm -hmm. event for Invest in ME. Um, you know, if I can highlight that as a charity. and well, the, the Chili Challenge, which I... I well, I, you've done I, it, I, I've done I, it. I, yeah, yeah I've, done the, I've done the... I hate hot food as well. Yeah. I, posted that, <laughs> I posted that on various platforms of social media. If you want to see me look like I'm about to throw up, you're more <laughs> than welcome. Uh, I did the Chili Challenge. It's horrible. So you've done that. I mean, there's a lot going on at the moment. Yeah, there's always so something it a, happening. It's awareness. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really kind of changing people's attitudes is, is the key behind it. And, you know, the more that people know that there's charities and there's research projects going on the more it will give people hope who've got me the families can get involved you, you know the donations the sponsors um raising the profile of of the charity is is what i'm about so well mike harley from bedminster and bristol running 28 or potentially now 29 marathons <laughs> uh, supporting invest in me and raising awareness uh, around uh, the european union mike thank you very much for coming and good luck